Hello guys and girls, welcome to Geekism, my name is Jonty and this is our complete beginner's guide to playing Planet Coaster. We've already done some tutorials on the channel already about specific parts of the game such as triggers or buildings, uh, but after an influx of people purchasing the game or having it gifted to them at Christmas, I thought it'd be a nice idea to go back to basics and go through some of the uh, simpler issues with the game that maybe some new people are coming and having. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We do loads of Planet Coaster stuff here. And if the video is useful food to you, please don't forget to give it a like. When you start up the game, you'll be asked to design your avatar. And once you have done that, you'll look at a screen similar to this. There are three main play modes in the game. That is Career, Sandbox and Challenge. Sandbox is pretty self-explanatory. You're given a big open area to play with. There is no uh, money in the game, although the guests still have money, but you're, you are you have limited money, you can build whatever you like. Pretty simple. The other two, career and challenge, are a little bit confusing, and personally, I think the name should probably be the other way around. Uh, career is your scenarios, your sort of set levels that you can complete by present, by doing certain tasks. So if we go into there, you'll see there are various levels. There's five sets of three levels each, and each of these have specific things to tick off the list, build certain coasters, get so many people in the park, and things like that. And I would actually suggest going in here first and trying a couple of the early ones at least to get a bit of an idea of the gameplay. Uh, the final mode is called challenge mode, and that is basically a sandbox mode where money matters so you're given a certain amount of some money to start off with and also challenges pop up from time to time that can be completed as sort of side quests so it'll say something like uh, build a coaster with a certain excitement rating or get up a scenery rating of so much throughout the whole park these can be ignored uh, or done for extra monetary gains. So I would probably recommend going into Korea and try to first a couple of those to start off with, but for now we're going to go into Sandbox to have a look at some of the basic gameplay features. Once you're in your Sandpark game, it'll look something like this, although it's obviously different depending on which sort of theme you select. We're in Tropical here. But the first thing you'll notice is this item here, which is your park entrance. Guests have to pass through this to count themselves as part of the park before they can do anything else. There will be one place down for you, but you are able to build more if you wish. And of course, you can get rid of this one, although I wouldn't recommend it to start off with. I'd recommend working from this. From here, you can also change the price of entry for the park, um, but I would recommend leaving it as zero for now, having the park free to enter and charging for the rides. It is possible to have a park where you charge an entrance fee and have the rides free, which is a little bit trickier to do in this game than it is in other simulation theme park games. So for now, I'd recommend having a free entry and charging for the rides. Talking of rides, let's place down our first one. First of all, we're going to want to carry the path along from the entrance. Click the path button in the bottom right. You'll get a uh, small circle here that will snap to any open path ends. And you can just use the left click, click down and we'll just drag the path out this way a little. Just clicking each time. You can change the length of the path and the width of the path. There is a full path tutorial video on the channel already. So I'm not going to go into too much details here. But if you are struggling with the path system, which I imagine a few people are, because it's a little janky, I'd really recommend going over and watching that video. I'll pop a link up in the corner. Once you've got a bit of path area ready, it's time to place down your first ride. Rides in this game are split into three sections. First of all, we have coasters, as you, as you can imagine, are roller coasters. There's about 30 to choose from. There's also track rides, and these are sort of more gentle rides that are on a track as opposed to roller coasters. These include transport rides such as trains and monorails, uh, omnimovers such as the sleigh and the, uh, the magic cat rides, and then also the water rides, log flumes and river rapids. And the third section is just called rides, and these are what I would refer to them as flat rides. These are set rides that sit down and spin around or turn upside down and things like that. Your classic sort of things, uh, carousels, pirate ships, etc. We're going to start with these because they're really simple to get going. And uh, talking of carousels, let's start with that as it's a classic, isn't it? First of all, once you've selected the option, if you've got enough money or if you're in unlimited mode here like we are in Sandbox, you'll be able to place it down. And you'll see that when it's in a suitable position, the uh, the silhouette there will go white around it as opposed to red. We can't build it here because of the path. But if we take it out a little, we can place it down there. A click and that'll put it down. The camera will center on it and then we have to do three more things before we can open the ride. That is to place the entrance, place the exit and then connect the entrance to the main path with a queue. If we click place entrance, you'll see an entrance appears around the outside of the 
circle there. Because it's a circle, we can pretty much place it anywhere. You are a little bit more limited with some of the others, but we're going to place it anywhere we like. Um, we won't place it directly here because we want a little bit of length for a path. So what we'll actually do is place it around the back here. And then we'll place the exit. Again, that can be anywhere you like. I would recommend either having it close to the junction box here so that it's easy for our mechanics to get to later on, or I'd have it close to the path here so it's easy for guests to get off and head further into the park. Once that's placed down, we can do a connect entrance to path. And again, much like placing the path down, we're going to place a queue down, and eventually you'll be able to snap the queue to the edge of the path there, and you'll know it's worked because we'll get a little staff member there welcoming people into the right. Once all those three things are ticked off, the screen will change to look more like this. Along the top, you've got the ability to test and to open the ride. With flat rides, unless you make any changes to their sequence, which we'll talk about later, you can go ahead and open it straight away. And it'll be able to tell you on testing here what the results are. We have a relatively low excitement rating and fear rating, and a pretty low nausea rating as well. As you can imagine, the carousel is pretty, uh, pretty tame. Uh, what we can do is make the excitement rating a little bit higher on here by adding in a ride sequence. This is basically uh, the different parts of the ride, the different sequences the ride goes through as it goes on. We have spin, spin fast, and spin again. If we add an animation to spin fast and drop it in the middle there, and then test it, we have to test it now because we've made a change to the uh, to the original one. So we'll quickly test that, let it run through, and see what it does. While it's testing, I'm speeding up here using the button down the corner, or you can press the O button. There you go, you'll see with the extra spin fast, it's knocked the ratings up ever so slightly, and it'll make the ride a little bit more interesting. You might find that sometimes too many sequences will make the ride too long, and therefore not very profitable. Talking of profit, one thing you can do is change how much it costs to ride the ride. Starts off at $3.50, I'm going to knock that up to $4, we'll be able to increase that in a moment once we've dealt with some scenery. Okay, it's time to open our ride. If we click up here and click open, we get a little bit of confetti telling us that it's open, and now people will actually start to enter the park. You'll see a few people walking away here. They'll have got to the park entrance, realised there's nothing to do inside, and wandered off again. But now, as people come in, they'll pop in and they'll start riding the carousel. So a few people have started to decide to ride the carousel. A lot of people are deciding against it. It's probably because it has a relatively low excitement and fear rating. These people want something a bit more thrilling. But you will find that people start to queue up now, especially uh, families and uh, younger people. But we can make the ride more enticing to our guests by increasing its scenery rating. The scenery rating of a ride does two things. First of all, it will increase the queue scenery rating if the, uh, if the scenery is placed near the queue, and also it will increase the general ride rating known as prestige here, giving it a higher number. In some career modes and some of the harder difficulties in the challenge mode, uh, this number here, Ride Prestige, will actually de uh, decrease over time as the ride gets old again until it's so old it becomes classic. So scenery is really important to keep this number as high as you can. So we're going to place some scenery around the ride now. We click at our scenery tab. First of all, we'll have a load of different options like this, and it can be a little bit overwhelming to start off with. So what we're going to start off with is a couple of blueprints. Their blueprints are things built by the game's designers and added into the game. It's selections of scenery that are already set into uh, nice sort of arrangements. You can also download blueprints off the Steam Workshop or create your own blueprints and they'll be saved in my blueprints over here, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Here's a nice looking small fountain that will fit quite nicely at the front of our ride. So if we select it, we'll get it down here. Now at the moment the rotation's a little bit off. If we press the Z key or the Z key, depending on whereabouts in the world you're from, it'll rotate it 90 degrees. And to do some finer rotation, if we hold down that key and we can move around with our mouse, uh, it's a little big to fit in there, so instead we'll bring it round to this side of the ride, like that. If we want to do some really fine tuning with it, if we press the X key, we'll get a full rotation thing here that we can move up and down or pressing X again will mean we can rotate it on all different axes. Sometimes you won't be able to do this if there's a building piece involved. For more details on buildings, check out our two-part building tutorial. Again, I'll pop a link up in the corner. When we're ready to place the piece we want to do, we just have to click, or if we're in advanced mode, we can just click the tick, and that's now placed it down. And you'll see because that's near the queue, when we select the ride, it now has a 13% queue scenery rating as opposed to zero, and also the ride prestige has gone up ever so slightly as well. You'll find now that people are a little bit more willing to ride this ride. And while scenery won't directly affect 
uh, excitement rating, uh, apart from some scenery affecting uh, head chopper moments in coasters, but again, that's a little bit advanced for here. Whilst it won't affect excitement rating exactly, uh, it will affect how much people are willing to pay to ride it. And if you click here on the ride details, you'll see that some people eventually, there we go, 36% of people think that the Venetian carousel is really good value. And as you place more and more scenery around the ride, the prestige will go up, and I think it's more, uh, more and more value, you can increase the price. So let's place a few more bits of scenery down here, and we'll see how it does. So we're going to place some specific items down now, as opposed to using blueprints, we'll place some trees down. If we click on Custom within Scenery, and then Nature, we can then spe select specifically trees. And seeing as we're going for a bit of a tropical and piracy theme, let's place down some of these palm trees. All we have to do is click, and then click again, and that'll place them down. With trees, it's a good idea to press Z every time you place one. It'll give it a bit of a rotation and give it a bit of variation, rather than them all looking exactly the same. And you can vary them up even more by using some different ones here. These ones are a bit more um, sort of out there, really, with the directions they're facing and things like that. So we'll place a few of those down. And again, these will increase both the queue scenery rating, which increases the amount of time people are willing to queue for, and also the overall ride prestige. There you go, you can see that the, right, the uh, queue scenery rating is now up to 45%. And the ride prestige has pretty much stayed the same, but that only changes every time the ride goes through a complete circuit. So you'll notice that number go up a little bit over time. Scenery is weighted, and it's usually the more expensive items of scenery create the biggest amount of uh, change in the queue scenery rating. For the most part, natural things like trees and rocks uh, are relatively low additions, but then things like animatronics, speakers, special effects and things like that are higher additions. So if you look here, we'll place down an animatronic. If we go to props, there is a section just for animatronics. And let's see if we can find a pirate animatronic that looks pretty cool. Here we go, this guy, a little pirate lookout. We'll place him on the way out of the ride. We use Z to rotate and place him down. And hopefully that's close enough to the queue. Uh, it gives it a whole 7% queue scene rating just from that one uh, animatronic there. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time here doing some more work on the carousel. We've gone for a very piratey theme. We now have the pirates versus the red coats fighting to get out in front of the carousel. You'll see that the Q rating is all the way up to 100 and we uh, have a prestige of 392, almost uh, double what it was originally. And uh, now most people think it's really good value. We should probably be able to knock that up now to about $5. Obviously, um, you can't keep increasing scenery forever and charging more. There will be a sort of cap, but for the most part, the uh, the gentle flat rides you can get to sort of $5 to $6, and the more extreme flat rides, the spinny roundy things, you can get up to about $8 or $9, and, uh, and maybe even more if you really put the time in. I mean, this is about five minutes work here. Uh, obviously, in my own proper game, I'll spend maybe 10, 15, 20 hours on a single ride. Uh, it just shows you, though, exactly that the amount of time you put in is directly affected uh, by, by what you get out of it. So once the first ride's down, the next thing you probably want to do is place a few shops down. We're going to very quickly show you how shops work, and that'll be the end of part one. So if we go into shops and facilities, again, there are some custom-made ones that come with the game. Or if we click up at custom here, we can select just the empty boxes that we should build around. Again, I won't go into building too much here because we have done a separate uh, tutorial on that. So for now, we'll use one of the blueprints and we'll find a sort of Caribbean-looking uh, food shop or piracy one. Let's have a look. What's that one? Oh, here we go. Great pirate-looking... Uh, pirate looking chief beef store so this is, uh, this is really really well themed so we're gonna just use Z to figure out where we want to place it or Z and again if we wanted to we can press X but you'll notice that because this one is a building we can only rotate on a single axis there because you can't rotate building wall pieces and things like that so uh, yeah that looks pretty good there we'll pop it down and you'll hear there with Chief Beef, it will automatically open up and you'll see a few people will head over straight away. Now, inside Chief Beef, if we give it a click, we'll be able to select our vendor. And you'll see that now we have some staff that we have to worry about. Fanny Eaton is our first member of staff we have to worry about uh, because she works in a shop. So any staff members that work inside shops or wander around the park, such as uh, janitors or entertainers, we need to worry about how well they're doing, whether they need to be trained or whether they're being paid enough. The two members of staff that come with the ride, the person on the entrance and the person on the uh, the, the box here, 
Um, I must be happy working for a pittance because we never hear a problem out of them, which is a bit concerning for me. I would rather the staff that are running roller coasters uh, need to be happier than the people who are looking after burgers. But there you go. <laughs> uh, so you can see here that uh, she's so happy in her work and her staff happiness sits here. Staff happiness is affected by two factors. First of all, how much they're paid per month and how well they are trained. You'll be able to train them after so long. 3rd of May is our first one here. Uh, so we've got a few days to wait. So I'm going to hold that out and show you what happens. 3rd of May has come and gone. So we can now see we're able to train them. All we have to do is click and it'll charge us $150 to train them. So we'll click like so and there they are capable. For the uh, a good rule of thumb is their salary should be around $10 more than whatever it cost to train them last. So here it costs them $150 to train. So we'll give them $160 per month. And you'll see now she's super happy, very content with her paycheck, and the job is much easier with training. So there you go, that member of staff is trained up. Uh, but when you've got a few more members of staff, it gets quite difficult to... Uh, to move. She just said she wasn't happy then, did she? Let's have a look. Chief Beef, staff, uh, my pay isn't great. Oh my word, you obviously ungrateful. Let's try 170 there, maybe give them a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, you should be able to cap staff out at 200 and they should be happy. Uh, okay, so other members of staff, once you've got a few going, it can get tedious to click through them all like that. So we'll have a look in park management. Uh, there's loads of info here, pretty much everything you could want to find out about your park is found here. But if we click staff, this is where we can hire them, and then we can select here to view them. So at the moment we just have Fanny Eaton, who works in the burger store, but now we have shops open, our guests will start to make litter, so we could do with a janitor. If we click this button here, we'll place him down, and then he'll start wandering around and do some work on stuff. Uh, there is uh, a way of selecting where he will walk specifically and what he does, but we'll go into that in a further video. So for now, we'll give him an extra $10 just to get going because uh, we, we want our chances to be happy. And also, rather than just having him tidy up the rubbish, we'll place down a few bins to help him out. He'll empty the bins as he goes as well. We click into scenery and select path extras. You'll see here, there will be some bins you can place down. As we're doing a party theme, we'll select the barrel and we'll place a couple of these down. You can already see there's litter on the floor here as people have uh, thrown it on the floor before they've left. He'll get it, but to help him out, we'll place some bins down as well. So there you go. That should give you a good idea of how to start off your very first park. We've gone over ride placement, shop placement, queues, queue scenery, ride prestige, and the basics of your staffing system. In the next video, we'll cover staff in more detail and we'll go into further detail about ride prestige and how you can maximize input and output to get the best out of your park. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.